everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Amanda Rose and I am a high school teacher in Brooklyn New York my entire channel is about teaching life lifestyle and just providing advice for new teachers seasoned teachers just things that maybe we just have forgotten along the way and they've always been really good tidbits and so that's pretty much why I have created this channel is to remind us of all of the little things that we have learned throughout the years that we can just pull out of our pocket and then hopefully also provide you with some new tips and tricks for the classroom. So in today's video, I'm actually really excited about this. Someone recommended this in a comment um, and I realized like, wow, that's actually a really great video idea and I wanted to film it so in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys five simple and effective ways to motivate your students or encourage your students when you're starting a new topic. And the reason why I thought that this video would be such a great idea is because the truth is not every topic in our classroom, especially in social studies, is going to be mind-blowing and 100% interesting, but it is important to make sure that we grab the interest of our students because student buy-in is so important when we are teaching. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and let's get straight into it. Five simple and effective ways to motivate your students when you're teaching a new topic. Number one. Use video clips. YouTube has so many different videos to introduce a lesson. PBS has a lot of videos. There's just so many ways that you can start class with a three to five minute video, have students respond, react, what did they notice in the video. Is there anything that they can make any connections to from that video to what is happening today? Not every single time does it have to be a reading activity, but it can be just showing a simple short video in the beginning of class to pique your students' interest what I've also started to um, realize is that a lot of the video games that our kids play are rooted in historical context. And there are so many videos that have reenacted, whether it be um, whether it be just having to a, a war movie. There's another video or another game that reenacted the French Revolution. And so I've been able to find a lot of those videos on YouTube. And I will play those clips in the beginning of class before I even teach the lesson. And so it's like, oh, whoa, what is this about? Why are we watching this? And then it's like, well, this is actually the next topic that we're going to be learning. So definitely do not shy away from videos. I know that this should be an obvious one already for our classroom, but I think oftentimes videos are used um, in the middle of a lesson to support, but you can start the lesson out with a video clip that will then introduce students to everything that is happening. Number two, use music. There is music from every single time period that we teach in our classrooms. And a lot of times music tells the story of what was happening during that time. So definitely don't shy away from using music. I would play a song, I would print out the lyric sheets for students, and as they're listening to the song, they would have the sheet, the lyrics in front of them. And I would actually advise them to underline anything that sticks out to them, anything that's important, anything that provides any clues to what was happening during that time. And then afterwards, you can put like a really large web diagram on, um, on the board and you can have each student, usually I do this student by student, row by row, and just have them read out a line, a word, a phrase that they got from the lyrics. And then we can put that all around the web diagram. And even if a student wants to repeat the same thing that another student said, that's totally fine. You can put like a star next to it or underline it as many times as students want to bring that up. And then collectively as a class, you can um, do a little bit of reflection. Okay, so based on all of these lyrics, all of these words that we put on the board, what can we assume 
was happening during this time? What can we anticipate were some struggles? What can we anticipate were some joys, some benefits, some hardships of living during this time? What was life like? Um, and that is a really, really great way to engage students, even if the song might not be like something that they would listen to in their everyday life. Using music is such a valuable tool because so much music tells a story. And again, you can make it into an activity that will then introduce all of the historical context that you are teaching for the rest of the unit. Third thing, and probably one of my favorite ways, is to introduce political cartoons. And I'm going to see, I say I'm going to try to show a clip and then I realize that I never show clips. I'm going to try to incorporate a visual or maybe some um, little clips of things that I've used in my classroom of how I've used political cartoons to introduce topics, to get conversations started. What is it that you see? Um, what do you think is the message behind this cartoon? And so that does help generate conversation and discussion. I think a lot of times we think that students need to know context in order to analyze political cartoons. And I would say yes and no. Depending on the cartoon, it's really, really important that the students know context. But just teaching the skill of political cartoon analysis along with using it as a way to introduce topics and then you can use it later on to support topics, have students create their own political cartoons after they have learned about the topic. I just love using political cartoons in the classroom and so using that um, as like a do now activity is something that I've done countless times. Number four, ask students personal questions that connect to the topic. Questions that start with, have you ever? Or remember a time when you. Imagine if whatever the case may be and this happened to you. So definitely allowing students, I do this a lot for do nows, allowing students to express their personal opinions about things, share their stories. One, it helps build relationship like I've said multiple times over and over again. But then you can use their stories to then say, ah, interesting, because the same way that you responded is also what happened here. Or, oh, that you have something in common with this person from this time period. Or, yeah, can you imagine? Because that's what was happening to these people. So I love doing those types of questions. One, for me, they're the easiest to think of because you just have to know the historical time period you want to talk about and then just make a modern day question or version or scenario for your students and then that generates conversation discussion and it's such an easy transition into the topic so for me this is one of the simplest ways it is my go-to when i'm introducing new topics um, but there's definitely other ways obviously to do that as well the last thing providing personal narratives from someone who was alive during the time period that you're going to discuss Again, I think oftentimes we wait for this to be like the meat of the topic and um, we wait until we teach all of the context in order to then provide a personal narrative. But I think it's so much fun for a student to get um, a, a, a little clip from someone who was alive during the Holocaust and I'll be like, wait, what? What is this even about? What are they, what's happening? It provides for so much inquiry, for so many questions and interest in the topic and then you can share what's going on. Um, a teacher, friend of mine, a colleague, uh, she had found a personal narrative of I believe the priest who was riding in the cart with King Louis XVI on the day of his execution. And we used that in the classroom for students to get a really personal uh, view and insight into what that man was experiencing and also what he was witnessing as he had King Louis sit right next to him. And that was something that we had introduced once we were done talking about the topic. But for me, that would be such a great way to start to talk about the beginning of the French Revolution with this personal narrative of someone being executed and then later it's like, yeah, King Louis was executed by his people. And so what a cool way, in my opinion, to like hook the students, that's what my school would call it, you would hook them into really wanting to know about the story. And so even when um, certain parts might get a little 
boring or talking about the three different estates and all the different ways that they had this like caste system. Sometimes all the nitty gritty of that stuff can be boring. But if the kids remember in the back of their mind, but how, how did King Louis die? Like, but why did he die? Like what happened? What, how did they execute him? They will remember the end so that it helps you teach and then them want to know what was going on. So for me, I think personal narratives are a great way. And especially now with everything that's happening in the climate of our country, bringing in more people of color voices into our classroom and using personal narratives in the beginning of introducing a topic, I think is going to be golden. It will take time to find those things, but they're definitely out there. And so for me, these are all ways that I have always introduced new topics to my students. I hope that you guys have found this helpful. Again, I would love to know what you have done in your classrooms and get your students excited and, and motivated about the content. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, stay safe, subscribe.